This story on our website, KCBA.com. New tonight, police call it bullying on steroids. We're talking about gang stalking, but it actually has nothing to do with the gangs that you first think of. South Coast News reporter Candace Wynn learned more about the trend. Santa Cruz Police Lieutenant Larry Richard said police are becoming more aware of gang stalking because of cyber bullying. But what is gang stalking? Basically, the victims could be driving their car or talking on their phones or walking the streets when a group of people try to systematically terrorize them. Richard said gang stalking is nothing new, but new technology is making it more common. Gang stalking itself, they have elevated themselves to technology. So this is something that's been going on before the age of Facebook, Twitter, those other social websites. Uh, they just now have gone into those areas. Gazzino said he's proof that the problem isn't just online and that it can hit too close to home, a home he plans on leaving because of gang stalking. Okay, so in this video, you're going to see several things. You're going to see the connection between the Warner Center Met complex, which surrounds my ent entire place, which is a huge complex, um, and um, the security companies contacted by the police and government to hunt and stalk me. Um, now, remember that I've lived here for 20 years, even before the Met was purchased and built, and um, needless to say, this has always been going on since the very first minute I moved in. I don't know any of these people, any of them. Uh, they have this obsession, which is Kevin's a monster, and we have to hunt him down and kill him, um, or eradicate him, or lock him away, uh, while trying to follow me from place to place, digging for information to use against me. But of course, where things really get strange is it links back further and further back in University of Colorado, in Southern Oregon State College, in Calabasas High, uh, Round Meadow, or A. Wright Elementary School, and even Round Meadow, um, to linked events of like a forest fire following me, of groups of people working on me with the psychology community, my family trying to make me look crazy or collect anything they can get to twist, contort, take out of context, and disseminate worldwide to use against me. Yes, worldwide to use against me. I don't know anyone that tries to get information and give it out to planets full of information, planets full of people to have them mobbed to death. Um, or locked away or rid of the world that are running around, I just want you to have a good life. I just want to fix your life. It's unheard of. That is not why people do these things. That is not why the police investing billions with the government and psychology community do these things unless they throw some kind of five-year-old label on you and go, his kind can't exist and we're going to try to make his eradication look justified and that is exactly what is going on ripping away my constitutional rights and protections since five years old okay so now in this video you're going to see a couple of things you're first going to see me walk out of my house and the met security i don't exactly know what security company company it is right now but all security companies worldwide are working together from allied universal golden west um, Boyd's, uh, Ventura County ones, you name it, following me from place to place. Uh, if they see me driving, they follow me, stalk him and don't let him talk and threaten his life. All sorts of things like this. And remember, most of the time, the threats are very passive, like maybe I just follow you somewhere and I'm hovering over you and I say, well, you know, you can't go to a public parking lot with signs on your car that say Kevin Perlman Target, showing they don't want me talking. Um, they're, in, they're involved, they're accessories to murder. Uh, they don't want it to look like that. They want to make it look like it's just people gossiping and drama. But once again, if I go to a coffee shop and rest my feet on a chair and read a book and instantly it goes worldwide, everyone put your feet on chairs when you see Kevin Perlman or the Aubrey Fisher. He tapped his foot by me. So for six years, everyone tapping their feet and everything else by me with a thousand other things like this and billions of people involved, uh, that is a government eradication operation. So what you're going to see is I simply walk out of my house to get some air. And the Met security is watching me on their IP cams. They have cameras pointed at my house and they're trying to collect and get whatever they can with the police and government to use against me. 
Huh. Uh, all linking to Lorena Escobar, who my dad told to hire me at his company. Um, it's what you're doing in the privacy of your own home, trying to make it look like I'm the next Unabomber or Vegas shooter. Uh, hence my father paying off Victoria Walker to give me a toy gun, then trying to arrest me using this picture of the toy gun, and all sorts of freaky things. In courtrooms, on falsified uh, arrests with lead officer Sean Dinsey, who states on his web page uh, he forces people into mental institutions and this and that, that he just doesn't like or trust or are different than him. He doesn't say that those words, but he has articles about forcing people into mental institutions. Well, let me tell you, people don't force people into mental institutions. There's no such thing. Uh, what that, there's a translation, I don't like you, so I'm gonna eradicate you. And this is how I'm gonna do it. And remember that my brother threatening my life at 16, he and his friends are gonna put me in a mental institution after me stopping him from bashing Greg Waugh's head in with a, scope, a crowbar and then giving me the blood is thicker and water speech, how I have to spy on Greg and support him in uh, killing or harming or maiming people. And I said, I don't want any part of your crap, right? Um, well, stopping him, by jumping in the way of a crowbar, and you can see the link connections between Sean Dinsey, paid off by my father, uh, possibly even Arnold Silver, to eradicate me for what I know on their blood is thicker than water. We are murderers and you help us. Well, I don't help murderers. I'm a good, decent person who accepts uh, all good people and likes to start businesses and make money and do things with my life and have friends, relationships, and family if it goes that far or whatever, right? So I don't support that kind of behavior. So when I walk away from it, you can see what's going on. Larger and larger groups come after me. A lot of them paid off. A lot of them, a lot of police officers paid off to hunt me. Um, okay, so um, once again, the Met has security cameras pointed at my house. Now what they're doing is they're using the cameras to try to create mental illness. For example, let's say I walk out one day and I have a green shirt on. Uh, maybe 15 people around the surrounding areas will come out of the Met wearing green shirts. Uh, or they'll do other things. Maybe four people with black pants and purple shirts will come out on this side and same on the other side. Or maybe it's uh, 40 people walking dogs and the streets will go from no one walking dogs to 40 people walking dogs all at the same time. Then it will go to baby strollers. So maybe uh, one day, maybe I make a joke on Twitter like, um, um, Hey babies, and then all of a sudden women will come out pushing babies on strollers. And then they'll say, I'm imagining it. Or they'll say I'm making them do it because I'm posting things on my Facebook or Twitter or Instagram wall. And so I'm somehow making them all get together and hunt me and stalk me with these passive aggressive uh, idea of reference schizophrenia tactics that try to make me look like a violent paranoid schizo, which is some of the police cover-up operations linking and working with the psychology community and going back to an early age saying his kind can't exist so we're going to keep throwing these daily changing psychological labels to justify hunting him down and eradicating or killing him yet it's not a crime even if I were to be mentally ill or crazy or whatever that's not a crime that has nothing to do with police so what's going on is these the police are contacting these people, make Kevin look crazy, now we're going to arrest him, try to eradicate him, lock him away, whatever. Hence, the Met being told by the police, point the security cameras at my door so everyone can watch me on IP camera and do these things, right, to try to remove me from society. Now, um, on this day, I walk out and even though I've been telling this to people for years, they threaten my life, you know, you don't tell anyone we kill you, or you better accept what's going on or it's gonna get a lot worse for you, and all sorts of death threats like this. Um, and, um, or threats to rid me of the world, which is the same thing. Um, and um, I walk out, apparently the security guard is um, watching me on IP cam, probably on like a phone device, and instantly, when I walk in there, he comes over looking at me, showing me that he's kind of waiting for me um, by the area where they park the cars backwards in view when I walk out of my house. So, for example, 
if I talk, I I think at this this occasion there might be a red pickup truck backwards, and that happened probably after talking to a girl or something. Because what happens is I talk to a girl, and maybe then they pull ten pickup trucks on the street, hinting about picking up women to try to make me look like a schizophrenic, right? And of course I have all tons of photos and videos proving this, so they're angry. Um, so hence, I think at this point they had a red truck parked backwards, and parking cars backwards is one of their tactics, especially in uh, patterns and groups of twos and threes, now in parking lots all over the world, directed at me to cover up what they started in 2011. I parked my car once backwards at an Encino Starbucks with mass groups sent after me, which I have uh, multiple years of surveillance video of every minute attacks while sitting on a bench outside, and security guards from Allied Universal saying, coming up trying to scare me, saying it's illegal to ever take pictures of people on private property while um, they're being sur surveillance videoed with mass mobbings, and nowhere do they think the mass mobbings to kill someone are as wrong with psychological terror operations, which is beyond any level of proven on my website on the 15 terabytes of data I have, whatever. Uh, there is no dispute. Um, and um, they don't want me talking. So on this occasion, the security guard comes out. I come out to get some fresh air for just a minute. He pops his head out, showing the snake popping his head out of the grass. Um, I think I then go back in. I think I probably narrated it. I'm not sure. And then I think either I said it on camera or I made a mental note to be cautious because when I go out later to take a walk, um, something's probably going to happen because they know they're on video through my surveillance camera, right? Uh, which points all my property, but that part of it's kind of in view. So, and they don't want me, especially uh, Green T. Phillips, prosecutor Green T. Phillips, doesn't want me having a security camera on my property. Does that sound a little strange? You're crazy if you have a security camera in your property or your store or your business. You're a crazy man. I've never heard anything like that. Everyone has security cameras. There's a reason why security cameras exist, because people don't want psychotic murderers hunting them down and killing them or robbing their stores or whatever, right? Okay, well, but Kevin Perlman, like Mike, Hunt, Mike Huntley and my father told me, is not allowed to defend himself even with a security surveillance camera. Okay, so at this point, they know what's going on and later on, maybe like three hours later, I go out and I take a walk, and the police are working with some bald guy, kind of like the bald attacker, who comes down the street, um, and I think I go to hand him a card while documenting what they're doing on the streets with the cars to try to make me mentally ill because they don't want my kind, as they say it, going out and taking walks, whatever that means, and then they try to turn around, well Kevin's a public nuisance because he doesn't like what we're doing to make him mentally ill and kill him or lock him away or eradicate him or force him force him into mental institutions just like Dinsey states on his Facebook who is in direct communication with my father Ron Perlman and Arnold Silver being paid to hunt me and have me eradicated or killed. Okay? What did I do? I, I'm just different than my family. I'm a good decent person. Um, and um, so um, they don't like that, and all these people are accessories to murder, so they don't want it coming out. Um, so, um, a bald guy comes down, just like the dog attacker, uh, crossing the street. He's clearly working with the police, and I hand him a card. He go, gets mad. You're a liar. You're this, blah, blah, blah. And I go, it's all on video. And then when, I, when, when he finds out that everything's on video, he attacks me. He attacks me. He tries to steal my camera. He tells me it's illegal to have people hunting me trying to kill me on video and things like this because trying to turn it into like a Hollywood production issue uh, you don't have consent, you don't have contracts, you don't have food trucks, right? Things that don't make any sense, right? And as if the guy is stupid, no the guy's not stupid because after this when the police come out, the police are called, the police tell me we're not obligated to help you. Your kind needs to die. Of course, he doesn't say your kind needs to die, but he says you're all not, we're not obligated to help you. The Topanga Division, LAPD, or LAPD in general, is not obligated to stop crimes against Kevin Perlman. Why is that? That is a crime. That's, a, that's an accessory to murder. The police's job is to stop crimes, and if the police goes, well, this guy, someone's going to kill that guy, but I don't like him, 
He's an accessory to murder. Especially wearing that uniform. If you're a private citizen, it's a little different. Maybe you couldn't stop the crime. Maybe you didn't have the ability to stop the crime. But a police officer whose job is to stop a crime um, and tells you I'm not obligated to stop you, he wouldn't take the video proof, the USB stick, um, and um, the guy walked by him when I was describing him on the body-worn camera, and the cop didn't walk up to anything, they didn't stop him. So my point is it's Bang Division has the perpetrator on video at the scene. They didn't do a thing showing that they're aiding and abetting and our accessories to a 40 year murder operation to have me killed with the psychology community and are desperately trying to cover it up. And contacting security companies like you're gonna see here to try to set me up to rid me of the world. Uh, also known as gang stalking and eradication, government flagging, kill, or eradication operations. You don't have to do anything wrong. You don't have to be a criminal. Uh, the cops do hunt, stalk, and kill people they just don't like, as I am witness to this firsthand. And I have Brittany Henderson, a therapist, also on video, who is witnessing these mass people showing up. And now the, they're ramping up their attacks because Brittany's on video saying, yeah, I'm seeing it, and this is insane. And so now they're ramping up with the security companies, the death threats, and the following me around in larger and larger groups. Okay, so it's obvious at this point, this is entire thing, especially starting at 29 when I found out that with Mike Huntley's death threats, we're using the system against you and I've given you enough rope to hang yourself with. Um, they don't want me telling anyone or showing them the proof of what's being my life. That is why being done to my life. That is why they're so mad about some harmless so signs on my car or some harmless business cars that say Kevin Perlman Target and these people won't leave me alone. They're stalking me and nobody will help me. Um, you can understand why something that simple that nobody cares about opens up doors to things that are unheard of in government levels and mass, at this point, worldwide murder operations that have me killed that are all day and night, 24-7, no matter where I am in the world, and it's not one or two people around here. It's been going on, escalating since five years old, and the things my family's saying about me, um, and going up to wider, wider groups. For example, 10th grade Mr. Quigley told to try to make me, my 10th grade English teacher told to try to make me like look like a violent, paranoid schizo by telling me to punch Paul Schaefer in the class in our class when he pushed my desk over um, and my mother telling me it's just to toughen me up. Yeah, but yet while they're trying to toughen me up they have a planet full of people taking turns to eradicate me and this has gone on non-stop for, for literally 42 years and it got really bad at 29 where they realized I figured out what they were doing and they couldn't rid me of the world with no loose ends. Now it's getting messy. Okay, so now knowing that something, knowing that they, they know that I have um, video evidence of what they're doing, the security company watching, not direct evidence, but circumstantial evidence showing the interactions between me walking my, out of my house and them instantly kind of following me around, knowing when I walk out of my house, I know something's going to happen because when I go out for multiple reasons. One is because they've hacked my computer since 1994 and no matter what level of enterprise firewall I put in or rebuild, they have mass groups worldwide working with them, NSA, FBI level tools to just uh, shred through my uh, firewall and watch everything I'm doing on my computer and try to get anything that they can twist and contort and give to the world to use against me or have people come in my life trying to frame me like Jen Hess and Rody Morales calling me on the phone saying, Kevin, will you check my hotmail? Here's my password. And then they're running around going, Kevin's hacking their emails, all frame job operations and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of things like this from person after person sent after me my entire life. Uh, showing that they're going to rid me of the world no matter how perfect I am like Adolf Hitler doesn't care if you're a good person. Uh, he just says, I don't like you, I'm gonna rid you of the world. Okay, so um, um, I go take a walk, take the camera, of course, because I know 
something aggressive is going to happen, and I know that they know that I have the video footage, and of course something does, and so as I document the things going on that are happening all day and night 24-7 for the 20 years that I'm here, that I have over 10,000, 20,000 photos of identical cars and twos and like that, like this, just even, not only just around this area, but all over the world, um, but especially around this area, and if I go to an area where it's not happening, it instantly, within an hour's time, ramps up to what's going on here. Um, so I have these photos, and they're angry, because Kevin, you took pictures of us parking cars to make you mentally ill, and you're causing problems because you're getting proof of people trying to kill you. Unheard of. Unheard of. No one would ever say that. Um, unless they were slave owners or um, um, Nazis trying to kill Jews or just pathetic lowlifes trying to get power and control. But remember, this isn't one person. This is a literally, at this point, a worldwide conspiracy that goes up the ladder in the psychology community um, and his kind can't exist with all sorts of bunk labels that we think he's the next Vegas shooter or Unabomber. And then trying to plant toy guns on me when my father's paying off people like Victoria Walker to do these things. And this links back early and earlier. My father putting a bullet hole in his 300E Mercedes when I was um, 16 because he and Patty Guggen in his office didn't like a uh, watercolor painting of Black Wolf. Wait. No, no. It was, well, that was one of them. They didn't like the watercolor painting of Black Wolf from Ralph Bakshi's movie Wizards, but they also didn't like the Grateful Dead picture of the cowboy hat holding a gun like this. And my Patty Guggen says, don't show your father that. I'm like, what the hell is this lady talking about? And um, you get the idea. And then later on, 30 years later on, I buy a cowboy hat. And my father's mad because there's a little skull on the thing showing the connected events that my father's a nut job. He's a violent, he's a psycho, psycho, uh, psychologically violent, paranoid, psychotic because he's an orthopedic surgeon with a secondary psychology degree that likes to torture and kill his son and at the same time put shock collars on his dog like Rhoda and lock Maggie, the English sheepdog, in cages while hunting down and torturing and trying to eradicate. Uh, the younger brother, his son, and um, he's not really a good guy. And so, um, despite he wants to look like a good orthopedic surgeon, um, while reeling me in to work in his office and then continuing to take turns in anger and rage with his entire office until I'm dead and gone, and now desperately trying to cover up that as well, right? Okay, so, um, I'm getting video evidence. They know it. They know I have the evidence of the security guard. Um, and you're going to see that right now. Here it is.
Okay, so the first thing I want to state is that Prosecutor Crane T. Phillips <coughs> obviously knows what is going on while she pretends that I'm the bad guy. This paid, uh, paid off thug to move here from uh, Pasadena in 2017 um, and um, in 2009 Topanga Division LAPD was built where they really ramped up their attacks from mental illness attacks to physical attacks. Um, and are just really trying to turn them around and fabricate police reports to turn them around and make cover up these mass crime sprees. Quite possibly large donations from my stepfather Arnold Silver to build this. I'm, I'm, it's, that's just really a hunch or a theory uh, because all my communication with Dincy and the LAPD goes directly to Arnold Silver and probably would with Ron Perlman because when I was working in his office, cops would. They would thug me to death and then cops would show up to try to cover it up and immobilize me while torturing me to get these reactions or try to get these reactions to remove me from society. Point is, my family and these groups are working with the police to set me up, then make up lie after lie that somehow it's just justified because either I'm crazy or a criminal and these excuses or justifications change on a daily basis in the thousands from criminal psychological labels, just random yabos coming up with their own labels with the police to justify killing me or eradicating me. Um, and um, so there is direct communication from my family to the police and my family telling me stupid shit, oh, you know, it's because of childhood trauma and this and that, pretending that I'm not under constant attack all day and night with mass groups stalking me and I'm somehow obsessively holding on to something that doesn't matter and then they tell me that I have to confess, give them false confessions for them to try to cover it up, right? When they damn well know what's going on and what they're doing in my life to try to set me up all day and night over and over, even ten, even an hour ago when I was coming home. Uh, today alone, in the couple hours that I was out of my house today alone, I would say there's about 15, 20 harassments provoking set up attempts with multiple security guards, uh, people showing up at Jamba Jews, uh, security guards telling me not to park, I'm not allowed to wait on the street, on public streets for people, all sorts of weird freaky things. Okay, so um, I also want to discuss that all the people that have physically attacked me have been skinheads. Uh, Bailey Bernard followed me home, assault battery, me blocked me, told me I'm not allowed to go into my complex started a fight, hit, hit the keys out of my hand, started a fight, a uh, fight breaks out, LAPD is not concerned about anything, what's on video, the photos, uh, me calling the police first, none of it. They only are concerned if I touch the guy. If I touch the guy, then it's supposedly battery, and even Bailey Bernard had a tiny little, teeny tiny little bruise on his knee. It was like, like a bigger, you would get a bigger bruise if your cat like clawed you like this, right? Okay, uh, you get the idea, right? And then I had bruises all over, and then they tried to make it, oh, Kevin's faking it. Yeah, okay, sure. And um, obviously the jury was, jury tampered jury paid off just like my attorney Seymour Amster which refuses to tell the truth and they keep lying that all the video footage you have of these mass attacks against you is inadmissible as evidence yeah right sure okay so um, um, showing the level of people being paid off to hunt me and kill me and eradicate me okay so um, Okay, so I also want to know that these are the same exact types of schizo tactics that you're going to see from this skinhead guy working paid off with the police um, as Jen Hess, Julia Sofia Reynoso, we're going to call her Rody Morales, Julia Sofia Re Reynoso Morales because she was really, uh, that's my gut instinct, Rody Morales on IRC befriending me and um, pretending to be this Julia Sofia Reynoso trying to set me up and rid me of the world, um, just one out of thousands of women, for example, uh, Christy Reynolds in middle school, Corey Bixby in um, ninth grade, Calabasas High, um, Stephanie Schuyler sent after me on IRC, about another hundred IRCs, Sia Nijitang, um, 
Lynn Junkin, um, whatever, Mike Wexler, Jason Baum, people sent in my homes in Colorado trying to set me up, women told to uh, become roommates with me at Southern Oregon State College who are working with my family to spy on me, my mother migrating me into Noah Schiller with Deborah Schiller's house. Uh, after sending a guy in, a homeless guy into my house to migrate me out and try to make it look like I did something to him with the police, then trying to get coerced false confessions with Noah Schiller and Noah sending women after me to try to set me up, all sorts of things. Uh, these are all linked events. Uh, Mike Cho in 11th grade, Miss Tunic's class uh, with um, Steph No Cho, uh, Mike Cho uh, blurting out almost like some guy with Tourette's uh, you goddamn communist bastard just for no reason and them somehow saying it was me trying to make him crazy or weird freaky things like this that I found out are going on and these frame jobs um, so these are all linked events and what you're gonna see here just like Jen Hess claiming that um, first she claims the guy hit her with a mask on um, and then she comes over the next day with no bruises or anything and then later on, worldwide groups are saying that I hit her, which is strange. How does this happen unless she's involved in something? Elsie Sandoval at my father's office saying I hit her. How does this happen? Didn't even come close to hitting her. She was just mad at me exposing Mike Huntley, uh, threatening my life um, when he was talking about World Warcraft, playing World Warcraft in the office and things like that. Um, uh, you name it, so all of these events are connected to hunt me down and every time I tell someone what's going on larger and larger groups hunt me down to kill me uh, with my father telling me you're not allowed to defend yourself even the first amendment telling anyone just die Once again, we have uh, more groups of blinker types people. Uh, two red cars together here with the Mazdas. I'm always telling you on video, they group together and a third red Mustang over there. Uh, we have our two cars backwards here, one facing the other. So you can see, remember last night, the blinkers in uh, Santa Monica in groups, right? So now you can see tonight um, the blinkers the people with uh, blinkers on here at my house. And remember that was out in Santa Monica.
Okay, so also we have a car waiting there with the lights on. Uh, as you can see. And we have another blinker. Car with blinkers all the way over here at the end towards... Um, why isn't this lens focusing? Uh, are we on manual here? Um, all the way towards... Uh, Canoga. We have two Civics here, a gray Civic here, another gray Civic here. For you, uh, Officer Dinsey on video, three times trying to break in my house, trying to cover up their 40-year murder operations now. Check it out. Yeah. yeah. Officer Dinsey and the murderers in the LAPD trying to break in my house on video uh, three times, actually six times, but three on video. Okay, so I want you to notice, this guy lashes out in rage, he doesn't want a card, or actually, first he doesn't want a card, I don't give it to him, uh, Kareem T. Phillips, Seymour Amster, everyone else trying to cover this up is making up lies, I'm somehow trying to force cards on people, also, Elsie Sandoval, when the cards were first made, because they wouldn't stop after 10 years of daily murder operations, uh, LC Sandoval's lie, I'm trying to damn, jam people's windows shut with the cards, do you see people mad about things that people aren't normally mad about because they want to cover up a mass crime spree they're involved in as accessories to murder. Um, okay, so, um, you'll notice I don't force a card on him. He's yelling, he's acting out in rage. He, I think, eventually takes a card and I walk by and he finds out that all these things are on video. Um, and then you'll notice, you'll see that I'm talking to another guy, very friendly. And I hand him a card. And okay, so the guy is then mad um, that I'm talking to someone else and he's kind of walking down the opposite side of the road and then he comes all the way across the street to try to thug and intimidate me because I'm talking to someone else. Now if that isn't a sign of someone trying to cover up a crime that he's involved in, then I don't know what is. But yet remember, this guy's working with the LAPD. That's the most important part. This isn't some random crazy guy. He's working with the LAPD to have me hunted and killed since a very young age. And the psychology community, trying to cover it up, he's crazy and he's imagining it. But it's all on video. Okay, so, um, and he even lies. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, whatever, you know. Anyways, um...
Officer didn't see on video, trying to break in my house three times. Officer didn't see? No, he didn't. No, you're not lying, sack of shit. It's on video, do you want it? No. Well, yeah, actually, you know what? Let me have that. Piece of shit. Why am I lying shit? I have all you on video in your murder operation. Okay, so you can see that guy was bald, like Dency, um, if he's on the camera frame, and he says, you're a lying piece of shit, no I didn't, blah blah blah, but that wasn't Dency, but he's bald like Dency, right? Um, so, those are the types of schizo tactics that are going on. Right? So you saw that guy, he's bald, he looks like, I'm going to sort of repeat it, but he's bald, he looks like Sean Dinsey um, in a, the bald aspect. I say, do you want a card? He says, no I don't, like kind of looking at me with this really mean face, no I don't, uh, you're a lying piece of shit. Um, I said, not you, Dinsey. And so he kind of um, spazzes out playing this schizo game that, um, like, right, I'm gonna try to thug you quiet. Oh, Carter, I uh, didn't see on video three times with his crew trying to break in my house. Actually, six now, but three on video. What? Oh, Sean Dinsey trying to break in my house on surveillance video. Sean Oh, Officer Lee, Officer Sean Dinsey. For sure. Yeah, and uh, him and his crew three times trying to break in my house, but also that's six times and once with my father, so. Uh, oh my but God. three on video, check it out. Okay, so he's actually across the street now. Hey. Walk. Yeah. Um. Why? Why do you? I guess I should ask. Why do you say? Why do you? I'm a lying piece of shit. But why do you think that? It's cool. Whatever. But. Look, you know what? Um, I lost the card though. The guy was coming real fast at me. Okay. Uh, this is really interesting. He says, sorry I lost a card, a car was coming really fast at me. Um, actually implying with an innuendo that I've somehow done something to someone with my car, right? Now you're saying, Gavin, how do you know that? Well, because first of all, it's obvious the guy's full of shit to begin with. Um, but second of all, on 12-30-2018, a Starbucks uh, customer, or Starbucks employee, at Winneka with Sean Dinsey. Once again, Sean Dinsey with the discovery. Kevin has driving issues. Kevin's out of control. Kevin's this, Kevin's that. Uh, for farting wrong on the freeway or something. Right? With a great driving record. Sean Dinsey. And if you've seen my video of the 30 years of them actually telling people to launch vehicles and throw vehicles at me uh, waiting on the side of the road and throwing them perpendicular at me and things like this uh, or people in Hollywood on skaters and bikers told to try to unjet people walking actually intentionally showing anger and rage and trying to walk in front of me in such ways to cause accidents which they can't achieve um, the Starbucks customer, I come in, and I can't remember the exact dialogue, but it's all on video. Um, and I say something like, you scared me. And then he, as an innuendo, says, oh, well, I like to do that. I like to uh, drive fast at people with my car or something like this, right? Um, showing, once again, the next, like, 10,000th fabrication with people like Sean Dinsey paid off to hunt me and kill me and eradicate me and lock me in mental institutions, my kind, isn't allowed to breathe, being a hate crime with Sean Dinsey and those who he's involved with, having the power to fabricate whatever he feels like. Um, then, of course, the Starbucks employees with Sean Dinsey fabricated, I threatened to kill all Starbucks customers 
once again, Sean Dinsey saying I'm the next Vegas shooter, now claiming I've threatened to kill all Starbucks customers, and working with Victoria Walker sent out for me and paid off to hunt me and have me uh, exterminated, saying that I'm the next Unabomber. Yet I'm the only one accepting and being the nicest person known to man, and of course then their lame cover-up excuses, well because you're too nice, it means you're going to snap and this is going to happen and that. Things that don't make sense from rational sane people, right? Um, showing agendas to hunt me down and kill me or lock me in cages and eradicate my kind which starts at five years old. These fabrications and lies start at five years old and they just escalate to larger and larger circles. Um, so, the point I'm making is the, these events, what he's saying is connected with the Starbucks Corporation, with Dinsey's fabrications, um, who is running for city council on the 4th, um, June 4th, while trying to make it look like I'm violating the probation from his first set of lies, right? Um, at the very end of a summary probation hearing, right? You see what's going on? Um, this guy is a menace to society, and he's trying to get to the top by hunting down and eradicating imperfection, my kind as he calls it, or whatever. Um, hence, them paying off these people to try to silence me while they're actively hunting me down to torture me, kill me, or try to get reactions to set me up to eradicate me to begin with. Oh, sure. But I got friends. Well, I, I get like about, 10 of this is about safety, okay? Can I, I get, get like 10? Sure. Uh, this isn't about you. I don't even know you. Can I, have, can I have some more? Look. You can have a little more. Look, I'm like super wanted and all this uh, stuff. I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. And so I'm, I'm telling you. Look, I'm going to pass them out. I'll pay you 50 bucks. I'll call you in an hour, I'll go up to my unit, but I want to go give these to someone real quick. Oh, that's fine. Alright, let me have the rest of it. Oh, well, you're going to have that. Well, can I, come on, man. <laughs> Dude, that's 100 good. bucks? What? For for the cards. Come I want to pass them out, like, all over the mall. Well, then, um, that's fine. That's totally cool. Can I have but, more? Well, email me on the website. Okay, but if I, can I have some more, please? Uh, that's, that's good for now, but. Come on. But email me on the website. Let me just see, let me just see. Come on. <laughs> Dude. Let me have, like, 40 of them. <laughs> 40. Yeah. Why 40? Huh? Well, you said I'm a lying piece of shit. Why, why is I that? I didn't mean that, but let me see the rest of the cards, bro. Dude. Hey, 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 look. Look. I'm going to be nice to you, all right? It's not me you got to worry about. Let me see the rest of the cards. Dude. All right? Look. Hey. You know you're lying about this, right? About what? Specifically, okay, say... Okay, what did you the... give me the card for? Uh, because of mass groups taking turns in anger and rage no, on me. No, you said something about... I said Sean Dinsey. Yeah. You're not Sean Dinsey. Sean Dinsey is on video trying to break all my... in all my house. It's on no, the website. Not. It's on the website. No, he's not. And that's Okay, then you can believe that, but it's on video. Look, you're going to get defamation of character. You're going to get sued up to ass. That's not fine. That. That's fine. And then the video will come out of the court. Videos. Yeah, and it's not true. How is video not true? Well, where'd you get it? What do you mean where'd I get it? Where'd you get it? On well, my security camera. Okay, so you filmed. That's not filmed, that's video. And okay, every, so you every video. business and houses have security cameras. But where's cameras. your house? It's right here. Where? The Woodland Oaks. Oh, you don't know what the Met is? No. Oh, okay. I'm not in the Met right now, am I? Well, it's illegal to film anybody. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Unless you get no, written not. permission and a non disclosure. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Okay, well, you can believe that. No, that's totally I can believe cool that. with you. But look, I just want to know your name. It's Kevin Perlman, just okay. like on the card. Kevin Perlman. Correct. Okay, and your job is to what? My job is to do IT, um, computer animation, visual effects at Universal Studios, modern video film, uh, computer networks, until oh. mass groups say, I want you dead and gone, and we're going to kill you. And then I can't do my job. Okay, so you, you're now seeing that he's starting to go ballistic. Uh, for what I know and what I'm talking about and them not wanting to have the truth of this mass conspiracy coming out and that I'm a really good person and they won't stop and they won't leave me alone. Um, so, um, let's break down what's going on. What you've just seen. Let's break it down. Uh, first he says, hey. When he's coming back on the other, other way, he says really loud, hey. 
linking back to Heather from Yankee Doodles sent after me to follow me from Yankee Doodles in Willen Hills Pool Hall to Encino Starbucks working on me with mass groups after they spent something like six years to run me out of the pool hall. They ran me out of the pool hall, all linking back to a, a psychiatrist named Susan Donner trying to fabricate things about me. Um, when I first found out at 29, what was going on to cover up this mass crime spree, making up lies that I'm somehow harassing waitresses in the pool hall because they didn't want, my family didn't want me shooting pool. And I'm really not going to talk about my father buying, my stepfather Arnold buying a property that my mother wanted me to go out and document for him um, on Plummer, Burbank, wait, kind of by Burbank Park area that also has a pool hall in it. That's interesting, but I, I don't want to go there. Okay, so Heather is told to follow me to Yankee Doodles or to Starbucks and then try to set me up. Um, after going hey to her, after she's provoking me at Yankee Doodles with, a, with the entire place and strangers coming in for about six years in angry rage, provoking me hundreds to a thousands per night because I'm playing pool, minding my own business and being as nice as possible. Okay, so she then, after this, follows me to Encino Starbucks where they're doing the same thing in every other place worldwide and then tells me, oh hey, I work here. I work here. So why don't you come into my store? But of course, I'm not going to go into the store after what she's involved in, unless obviously she comes up and admits the situation, and she didn't do anything like that, showing she's trying to make it look like I'm stalking her. Also, Aubrey Fisher sent after me before that, uh, working with Rody Morales that wanted to take me to strip clubs, uh, and Aubrey Fisher sabotaging me getting into studio photography and having modelmayhem.com mayhem me to death with worldwide groups in that industry. So I say hey to her. They pretend that I committed the hey crime. Yes, that doesn't make any sense. While mobbing me with 100,000 to a million people per day, escalating. Who knows, maybe it only started off at 1,000 people per day. What's the difference? Um, and um, he is linked to Heather from Yankee Doodles trying to hint, well, you ruin this girl's life by saying, hey, so we're going to hunt you down and kill you with the LAPD, police, government, psychology community, because you have an anger rage or lashing out in rage. Wait, I'm not the guy following people around since five years old with a thousand people per day taking turns with carefully crafted psychological passive-aggressive torture operations to try to get me to threaten people's lives to say Kevin's a violent paranoid schizo. I'm the guy holding doors open for you and welcoming you into my life provided you're not some kind of murderer. Um, okay, so that's why he says hey really loud. Uh, to cover up what they're doing with Heather from Yankee Doodles. Uh, pretends to be friendly and asking to borrow cards. Right? I'm sorry, blah, 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 but can I have some cards? Then he wants more, then he wants more, then he gets angry, right? Now, somehow this is my fault. I'm making him do this. That's what the police will tell you. Um, then when he wants all of them, I'm like, no, you, you can't have all of them. Then he gets mad. Um, ask what I do for a living. Now, why did he ask what I do? Because they're trying to make me look crazy. My family's running around saying I conform to media, um, I don't have, I don't know boundary issues. Um, I have no self control. I try to take over companies. Uh, Lorena Escobar for doing a good job um, rebuilding all the ancient NT4 servers and putting in mail servers and putting in virtual servers and doing all these things for them so that their life could be really easy um, in their business. Um, Lorena is running around saying, "I'm trying to take over the company." And they're sending people like Debbie Groveman, Kevin paying off, my father paying off Debbie Groveman, Kevin, will you fix my son's computer? Sure. And then her giving me a speech how I should take over my father's company and get rid of Lorena and me saying no as setup operations, showing that they, these are actually going on and they're trying to manipulate me and set me up to lock me away in jail cells or mental institutions. Um, 
Lorena Escobar then telling the world I'm somehow trying to take over the company that she was told by my father to hire me for. And if they don't want me there, all they have to do is fire me, not following me from place to place, trying to torture and kill me, saying quit. Right? Why would they do that? Because they have something to hide. They don't want to look like the bad guys. Um, and I'm not going to go into too much details of all the people that sent after me, like uh, George Escobar, Dominique, Brian, um, Shanna, Brian Seva, following me to coffee shops, um, Lloyd E. Martinez, Marlene Ramirez, um, Tony Montilla, um, Alita, they had a black girl, Alita, pretending that she's paranoid, working with people like Lynn Junkin and Mike Wexler back when I was in Colorado saying that I'm a hacker and somehow doing something to people, right? And then going back to Kelly Hatch at Southern Oregon State College. Um, okay, so, um, he asked me what I do for a living as if I'm supposed to say, oh, hey, I'm a producer and we're making a movie. Trying to get that Kevin's crazy response, right? But it doesn't work, right? So then he gets mad. He says, well, you can't film people. And I say, I'm videoing people, right? People have cell phone cameras. People have security cameras. There is no crime to video, take pictures on private property, public property, or anywhere else. Maybe someone will get offended. Maybe someone will, won't like it. Maybe if you're on a, pri pro a private property, they say, you're not allowed to take pictures here. And if you take pictures, they say, I don't want you on the property. But it's not a crime. There's no such crime as taking pictures. Now remember, Mike Wexler sent after me, my brother's friend, in 1996, taking a studio or a photog film photography class, borrowing Chad Bauer's 81 camera, instantly telling me that I'm not allowed to take pictures of people working with the police. If that isn't strange, I don't know what is. Uh, he was involved in all sorts of other operations with Lynn Junkin, trying to set me up for statutory rape, trying to get me to like her, all sorts of freaky things that didn't work like usual. Showing, remember, he links back to my brother and my brother wanting to force me into a mental institution for stopping him from bashing Greg while I was headed with a crowbar. Um, okay, so then he starts with some of the um, packaged uh, oppression tactics that are given to the world. Um, it's illegal to take pictures of a person. Once again, linking back to Mike Wexler in 96, but really it's just a justification or disinformation to make me think it's my fault they're hunting me down and killing me with worldwide groups, just like Adolf Hitler would tell you he's taking you to the showers to clean you, right? Um, and this goes from place to place, person to person, showing the connected commu communication worldwide of these operations. Um, uh, Mike, oh, Allied Security, uh, direct links to Allied Security. I've now had three, three Allied Security people at multiple locations all around California. Uh, it's illegal to take pictures of uh, people on private property. Uh, showing that we all know it's not illegal, showing that there's a connected communication. If you see Kevin Perlman or follow Kevin Perlman, do these things to him. Try to rid him of the world. Um, uh, coffee Bean in Woodland Hills, and Encino Starbucks, and um, by the Daily News. Interesting. I'm sure the Daily News aren't allowed to put pictures on their newspaper either. Okay, so um, three connected events with Allied Security, actually linking to Brian Longbotham hiring me for jobs at Universal Studios and frame job operations. Um, once again, it's illegal to take pictures as a tourist at Universal Studios too, right? Sure, okay. Um, and they were working on, Brian Longworth was wor working on the Pavarazzi tactic years before that as well, which does make any sense. Okay. Um, okay, the, the threat extortion letters, which only two people knew about. One was Detective Shapiro. The only person I told about me getting harassing emails was Detective Shapiro and my mother. That is it. So when you see him, Detective Shapiro and my mother were told right about this. You see him, he's talking about me sending letters to myself, which I have the emails, and the email header says, 
from Kevin to Kevin on a spoofed email, but once you go down to where the server information, it then shows who it's coming from and where it's coming from and this and that, showing it's not coming from me, but more importantly on these emails that I have, that they don't want me having, um, it proves that he is in contact with Detective Shapiro at LAPD, Topanga Division, who is stating that I suffer from delusional disorders while having video of the other bald guy who attacked me with his dog, all on video, pictures of me in the hospital bleeding, all on video, hospital reports, all on video, or um, whatever, screen captured or saved or PDFs. Um, of course, the doctor was told on the report at the top to put Kevin suffers from delusional disorders. Wait a minute, how many ER doctors put psychological evaluations on ER reports? They don't, right? So showing that Shapiro is connected with West Hills Hospital in murder operations, or she's an accessory to murder to try to lock me away and remove me from society. Now remember on Dinsey's Facebook account, um, this is how we put force people into mental institutions. Wait, why do people, I've never heard of anything where people are forced into mental institutions. You, you're Jewish, you need to go into a mental institution. You, you're crazy, you need to go to a mental institution. You, you went to a bar, you drank too many beers, you need to go into a mental institution. That's unheard of. People are not forced into mental institutions. That statement on Dinsey's website is a crime of all crimes. It's an accessory to murder. It's an accessory to ridding people of the world. Uh, that in itself, on the front page, is the crime of all crimes. Um, so no, people aren't forced into mental institutions. They are not. People check into mental institutions. If they're crazy violent, they're put on temporary violent holds. There's no such thing as forcing someone into a mental institution and saying you're never allowed to leave unless someone hates someone or someone doesn't want someone talking, just like my brother's threats at 16 for stopping him from bashing Greg while skull in with a crowbar. Um, also, I thought about it, but Jen Yang, his wife, which they sent so many Jen Yang, Jens after me, um, is a judge. Her father is a judge. Jen Yang's father is a judge. Um, and um, I can't tell you the correlation, but I believe they might be telling people I somehow did something to Jen Yang because so many Jens are coming after me. Um, which is weird and would be inconsistent because I pretty much saved Greg Wah's life. Um, but there's so many freaky conspiracies and freaky things are trying to make me look crazy going on. It's hard to know which way is up, which way is down, what the hell is going on, but the one consistent is we're all going to get together and rid of the world. Um, so Jen Yang was originally Jason Perlman, my brother's girlfriend. My brother got mad that she broke up with him and dated Greg, hence going after him with a crowbar and me jumping in front of the crowbar. So another thing that Detective Shapiro and Detective Angela Stewart and the entire Topanga Division LAPD is mad at is that when all the employees in my father's office were getting the administrative password, screwing up the systems and trying to make me mentally ill, me being the server admin, uh, I put in stalked st at lk3d as a password after they wouldn't stop getting the passwords. And several years later, after my father fired me because more and more of the truth was coming out and he wants to lock me away for defending myself, not wanting to be hunted, killed, or eradicated, um, I was getting all these extortion blackmail emails, I know your password is stalked and this and that, like two or three, maybe even four years after being fired from Golden State Sports Medical, showing that the people in my father's office took the bait that they have something to hide, giving these things, like, I probably got 15 of these threat uh, threat emails with multiple passwords of mine, giving it to Detective Shapiro at Topanga LAPD, and Detective Shapiro going, I don't see anything here. This is just spam. Wait a minute. 
spam with my personal password and like maybe let's say five different passwords yeah sure it's just spam and then the spam went from my father's office to my house so these strategic spammers who are getting my passwords are not only getting them at my father's office but they're getting them at my house and detective Shapiro doesn't can't do one plus one equals two then this person is completely a moronic idiot this is a danger to us civilians um, but that is not the case. She's involved in a mass crime spree and an accessory to murder, and she doesn't want the truth coming out. Now that you've seen the absurdity of this guy on video, and that he's a complete hired thug and criminal by the police, he's then saying, run, run. And I believe that was like take out of a movie. Um, maybe the deliverance or something. I'm not sure, but I think he might have been sort of... But he was trying to thug and intimidate, intimidate bel belittle me, push me. Oh, and more importantly, while he's pushing me, which you can't see very well on the camera because I'm not pointing it directly at him. He's grabbing the camera strap just like the dog attacker was, uh, just like the other people, and he's trying to get the camera. He's trying to steal the camera. So why is he trying to steal the camera? I mean, hey, the guy's got nothing to hide. I'm the guilty guy. He's got all this dirt on me, right? So why is he trying to steal the camera? Okay, so you've seen it right here. This is undisputable on video. Okay, so now the police are called. Wait for this. The police are called. Uh, they don't say that. Oh yes, I have tons no. of people on video. Because we it. have proof that you're the one that's making those messages in the camera. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, wait, time out. You know what an IP address is? Okay. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have evidence okay. that you've been actually... Okay, go ahead. ...misinforming everybody by giving disinformation as to your whole propaganda bullshit. Okay, so you are actually know. caught, proving that you're the one sending yourself death threats and blaming it on an officer. And we have, have to see that proof. You know why? Because you're fucking. Okay, uh, show me that proof. We have it. Show it. No, I don't want to. I don't. I don't care about words. We don't, words we're, talk is cheap. No, 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 no. It's not that we. You think we would show you? No, you're stupid I, I enough think, to fucking I, yeah, do you, it. You're right. I think. You're I think. Fuck. I, okay, fine. Sure. <laughs> But yeah. Then, so why don't you run right now? Why? There's no reason. Oh, you want to fight? Run. I'm walking away from you. Okay, so so run. Why? Come on, run. Go. Run. Run. How about we call 911? <laughs> So now the police are called, and like usual, they're not going to do anything, and I pretty much know they're not going to do anything, because they're the ones paying off these people to have me killed. And remember, this is worldwide. This has gone from college to college, place to place. Um, I call the police. Officer Lee comes out. I don't know who the partner was. My attorney, Seymour Amster, tells me to put it on a USB stick and hand it to him. They come out. The first thing Officer Lee says is, we're not obligated to help you. And they sort of try to give me this disinformation where they're not obligated to help me and save my life and this and that. So they're murderers. Um, and they're obviously paying off the people to kill me. So, you know, who's funding the hit? I don't know because it starts at five years old. So is it, I can't. But it starts with the psychology community. That's where it gets freaky. Um, my father has a secondary psychology degree, my mother has a psychology degree in art therapy, and my brother has a secondary psychology degree. You get it? Okay. Um, Lee comes out, we're not obligated to help you, which is a flat out lie, showing negligence, aiding, abetting, and murder. Accessory to murder. Um, unfortunately, I only have the second half on recording. Um, Lee then starts belittling me, trying to make me look crazy. Um, 
Lee asks me what the guy looks like. I tell him. He tries to belittle, belittle me. Oh, well, you think? You think because oh, one of them was bald. I don't think Lee was. Lee was Asian, obviously. Uh, oh, so we we must be uh, skinheads too, right? Whatever. Trying to take a simple description and turn it into something it's not to make me look crazy. Now remember, uh, Lee is recording on a body cam. So all of this is obtainable by lawyers showing that he won't help me. Now if the lawyers don't want to help me with that, then the lawyers are involved in a mass murder operation because no lawyer, no lawyer in their right mind would say I'm not going to do what's right and get paid to stop this and show that there are murdering cops. Um, now, um, trying to kill this person all day and night for 40 years or whatever, um, or they'll help anyone else, just not me. Um, so now the guy comes walking from Mary Lee Street down my direction. I go, there he is. That's the guy. Lee won't do anything. His camera's pointed at the guy. He won't do anything. He won't take the video proof. Um, you name it. I have a, a page on my website a mile long that says... LAPD or police refusing to help me with similar events like in the hundreds like this on my webpage one sequentially after the next showing that these people are being told to hunt me and kill me and with Dinsey's neighborhood murder group watch groups all around the entire planet to hunt kill or try to force me into jail cells or mental institutions because my kind as they put it can't exist. Now there's all sorts of paranoid schizo tactics and ideas of references that they're working on. Why did the guy come from Mary Lee Street? Well, a while back, maybe five, maybe seven years ago, one officer is asking me questions why I take walks on Mary Lee Street. Okay? I never would have thought about anything until he said that. Then I find out it's linked with Heather Lee, a porn star. Heather Lee, the porn star. My family saying weird, crazy shit that I'm obsessed, crazy man looking for Heather Lee. Then it switches to Heather from Yankee Doodles. Then it switches to my cousin Heather. By the way, my cousin Heather is a redhead. Um, the Yankee Doodles Heather is a redhead. So they're, they're fabricating all these theories and scenarios and they're just pulling them out of their ass. Right? But it's not a one-time thing here. My family, the psychology community, are jumping from thing to thing to thing in the thousands. Oh, Kevin wore a camouflage hat, so Kevin thinks he's in the army. Uh, Kevin wore a blue shirt, so he's threatening our lives. Kevin uh, wore a cowboy hat, so he's a murderer and thinks he's a cowboy. Right? And they just keep changing on a daily basis. Right? And then you pick up on it when the officer says, why do you walk down Mary Lee Street? And women keep coming up with Heather things and all sorts of freaky things. Right? And you're putting it to this. Someone with a psychology degree wants me dead and gone and locked away in jail cell and mental institution, and those some ones are my mother, father, and brother. Starting at five years old, going to the police, going to the psychology community, in anger and rage that they didn't just get what they want, but where things don't really, where things fall apart, is that they actually seem to be paying off the police to have me hunted and killed with every resource known to man, and the police are saying, yes, I'll take the money, or if there's no money involved, yes, I'll help you kill your son or rid him of the world, right? Now, I have no solid proof of that, but I have the interlinking connections of these mass groups and where this starts at five and how the information flows and the mass proof of the police refusing to stop hunting me and working with these people to hunt me. That I have all that proof, just not who's, how they're getting them to do it and what's motivating them. No proof, but usually money is the motivator. Okay, so, um, so unfortunately I only have the second half of Lee's conversation, but you can still see the belittling anger and rage, and your kind can't exist, and we're gonna rid you of the world, and we're gonna pay off people to hunt you and do these things, right? Why? I have no clue but I'm supposed to tell the world why I'm being hunted for being the nicest person known to man and say I'm a horrible abusive monster and this and that because they want to cover it up and try to torture me into false confessions or lock me away in jail or mental institutions 
But if they get their false confessions, then they're going to arrest me and lock me away in jail cells and mental institutions anyways, right? So the motive is the motive. It's been going on since five years old and at 29, Mike Huntley sent my, originally my brother's friend going from let's start a company and I knew him for 15 years, all of a sudden to I've given you enough rope to hang yourself with, you're a dead man, we're going to make you mentally ill and kill you with the police and government. Okay? Originally my brother's friend. Now my family seemed to support my brother because blood is thicker than water. Well, last I checked, when someone says blood is thicker than water, it's not in a mobster murder way. It's in a good kind, yeah, we're family and family sticks together, but if my family are psychotic murderers, then the context changes, right? Now how do they have these resources for getting the police to do this? I don't know. Uh, but they are definitely working with worldwide support now, spewing out lie after lie to the world in my eradication. Um, why? That's a good question. I mean, why don't I have the right to live or breathe? Because, um, I don't know, I like girls with tattoos, or uh, I build cars, or um, I come up with original innovative business ideas that are different than yours. I don't, I've never heard of such a thing, in like, except for in like uh, not, in Germany in the 40s and uh, things like that, right? Or maybe you're talking Roman times and they're battling over religion or something. I don't know. Okay, so now you've seen for yourself the police corruption and then not wanting me to talk while worldwide groups hunt me down to kill me. And just like Mike Huntley said, we're using the system against you to try to make you look crazy and rid you of the world. Just like some of my other proof with Deborah Bear sent after me through my stepfather Arnold from the um, Elif institution where they're trying to they're threatening to throw me in jail for seven years for what I know. Obviously that's not how they're making it look. Um, or I can check into a mental institution for six months and I can, you can bet that six months are going to fit into a lifetime because nobody spends 42 years trying to check someone into a mental institution unless they don't want them to ever leave and there's no reason I would need to be in one anyways despite what they're trying to say they just hate my guts Hi, I just had a guy assault and battery me. It is uh, Burbank and Canoga. Yeah. Uh, let's see, he was following me for a while. I think he's bald in a green shirt. I'm um, saying I'm a liar and I'm fucked and he has all this proof of me sending messages to myself and weird things like this. And then um, I said, if you, you have proof, you can show it to me. And then he said, you're fucked. And then he started attacking me and this and that. Um, he was following me for a while, but he turned around once I picked up the phone, so I don't see him, but the last I saw him, um, he looked white, but he could be a Hispanic white, I'm not sure, but mostly white. He looks like a skinhead, uh, green, green, green and blue shirt. Uh, yeah. Um, wasn't really looking, I was sort of trying to walk away from him. Uh, Canoga and Burbank. Um, I'm down by my house on Owen's Mouth and um, halfway down, or Owen's Mouth and Burbank, halfway down is Owen, Owen's Mouth. Um, yeah, do Burbank and Owen's Mouth uh, by my house and uh, also note that he's bald like the dog attacker who attacked me that's on video and um, also Bailey Bernard, which is bald, so I think they're skinheads and I'm Jewish. Um, 
I was walking down the street. He said, um, you're, uh, uh, I don't remember the exact words, but like, you're a lying piece of shit, this and that. And I said, why am I a lying piece of shit? He said, uh, I don't remember the exact words, but it went to, I said, I have these events on video of people going, attacking me in angry rages. How is it, how is it? If it's on video, well, that's not true, and you got it illegally because you're not allowed to have video of people. Um, I said there's security cameras all over in every store and place and whatever. Um, and if I have video cameras of my property of people trying to break in my property, um, you know that's not illegal. And he got defensive, um, saying, "Well, you're a liar, and you don't have proof, and we have proof that you're sending yourself threat letters and things like that with IPs." I said, you do? Okay, well, you can show them to me then if you want. Uh, he said, no. Uh, first, first, as I tried to walk away from him saying, look, if you don't, you have the right to believe what you want. And then he started getting angrier and angrier, and I started walking away, and he said, you better run. And I said, well, you know, I'm walking away, and you can go the other way or do whatever. And, um, oh, by the way, it's all on video. But, um, and he said, um, then he started pursuing me for like uh, 30 seconds. And then he threw his body against mine, um, kind of launching me into the dirt. And I continued to walk away. And he followed me, you better run this and that. And that's when I started calling you guys. He still followed me. Kevin Perlin, I'm sure you know the name. Uh, 917-435-0286. I can't tell you their reasoning because they just come after me year after year in groups and the more I find out, the more groups come after me. But the, but the, the bulk majority of the attackers in this area have all been bald. Oh, and then he tried to grab my camera and steal the camera. Um, what? I don't know. What's your definition of murder? When you kill someone and then he's no longer in living? Okay, there you go. So if... But well, you're still alive, though. Okay, attempted murder. Incriminates him in attempted murder. Uh, I'm asking you provoking me all day and night, 24-7, to torture. Provoking. Yeah, you know, the things on my video that you don't like. The okay. things on my website. I don't even, I don't even <laughs> know on your website. It's, how, do, how do you know I don't like it? Maybe I do like well, it. Well, because I'm ten times more known than Donald Trump. I'm known worldwide due to these yeah. operations. Yeah, exactly. And you're going to try to cover yeah, it up how, saying I'm how, crazy. How are they trying to kill you, though? Um, do you know that if someone keeps provoking you, mm -hmm. and then you collapse and fall on the ground, and they keep provoking exactly. you, um, and then you ask for help and they say if you tell someone I'm going to kill you and then they start hitting you and trying to do this and you don't talk or I kill you that eventually something really bad is going to happen and your nervous system is going to give out and you die just like the other police officers talking about it on my YouTubes, on my website that gang stalking is a crime and the highest level crime known to man um, yeah sure just slowly torture someone until they just slowly die in the most worst horrific painful way and then when you get it on video they start punching you in the face and attacking you with dogs and things like that all recorded on video uh, the dog was yeah just like the movie that, just like um, what's the movie um, what does it matter I gotta put it on the report. Um, okay, just making sure you guys are gonna go well. We're gonna help this kind and not that kind. No, I, um, I, I do. I do three D animation, visual effects. So what would you put that all into one? Computer consultant. Computer consultant. Oh, we don't help those people. <laughs> well, so that's my point. That's discrimination <laughs> and white supremacist thinking, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't help computer. Because everyone that, that uh, uses. What's your phone number? Um, nine one seven four three five. Uh, zero two a six because people that use computers are hackers and kill people with hacking. Right, right. <laughs> all, all computer users are hackers. <laughs> all right, so what did he look like? He just walked by you, and I just pulled him, and you guys didn't care. All right, so he's all male. You know what? Okay, what's his descent? He is whitish. He might have a little Hispanic. I'm not sure, but he's definitely white-looking and bald. And his hair? 
Bald? Don't play that game with me. Bald? Um, yeah, bald. He's, he's right, probably there. What's his eye color? I don't know. He's wearing a blue and green shirt, and um, bald, he? about five seven. How much does he weigh? Mm, about one eighty. And about, about what's his uh, age? He was younger, twenty five maybe. And you say he was wearing a blue shirt. Blue green, like shirt and Adidas pants. Do you have any tattoos or anything like that? Uh, he was fully. He didn't have anything on his face, but he's fully covered. Oh and yeah. He's cold out. Um, oh, like like sweatshirt. He just can't. No, I'm saying oh, okay. you can't see his body. All, right. All you can see is his hands and his face, his head. All right. Well, here's your ID. Okay. What I need from you is uh your signature here, because since you're the victim, you're gonna get a copy of the report. Okay. Right there. Mm-hmm. And this is, comes in the mail? No, I'm going to give you a copy oh, okay. right now. Yeah. Should I suggest? Mm -hmm. Try to stay away from bald guys? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not I mean, approaching. I was bald about two months ago, so. Yeah. Okay, first of all, you're trying to make me look crazy or something. No, but, I'm but, just saying. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Stay away from bald guys. I'm serious. Well, right. maybe you could say stay away from bald guys here. Right. But, right. I mean, that's the stupidest thing. I'm Officer thing. Salcido. This is my partner, Officer Lee. Mm -hmm. And that's our serial number right there. Okay. This is uh, um, Any relation to Heather Lee? I have. Heather Lee? Oh, that's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, okay. okay. My cousin and Heather and, and uh, uh, Kelly. Kelly, Kelly Hatch? What? Kelly Hatch? No. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, yeah, so, like I so said, you're not going to take this said, out? No, like my partner said, no. the detectives will contact you and then... Okay, from but there. they are going to contact me. I mean, yeah. like I said, the detectives, we're not detectives, we don't do that. No, but a salt and battery is a salt and battery, and if you guys are following me around saying you committed a crime for resting a leg on a chair, or two legs on a chair and reading a book at a Starbucks, I would think that detectives are going to call me back for, um, um, attempted murder and things like that and surveillance well, video of it. contact you, yeah. <laughs> so just make sure you answer the phone call. Okay. Alright. All right, thank you. Okay, so one of the things that uh, Officer Lee does is while he or his partner is writing the report, um, he fabricates the report. He puts in complete falsified statements Stating, trying to twist and contort the things I say, take them out of context, make me look crazy, and when you hear the conversation, you're going to hear him belittling me, and then he puts, I was a witness to a murder. Well, I never said I was a witness to a murder, uh, but more importantly, back around 25, they sent Rody Morales after me to befriend me in the gym, which Mike Huntley wanted me to go to the gym so bad to set up this meeting, so to speak, uh, I signed up to the gym, Rody Morales befriends me, which we have daily news articles. At the same time, I found nine years later of Rody Morales working with the LAPD. These are daily news articles. Uh, today, daily news didn't want to take proof of the mass crimes with a black lady there trying to cover up other aspects of them trying to hunt me and have me killed with the black community, egg mobbing me to death, things like this, uh, some reverse racist black girl at Starbucks on Victory in Canoga, working with mass groups, black people worldwide, um, hunting me, all that relate to things that don't make sense. Like, uh, the, real, the reason they're mad is because at first and second grade, I gave a black girl like a peck on the lips. Um, and they're, my family flipped out with these people. Our son kissed a black girl and that was it. I was labeled a white supremacist. It doesn't make any sense like all the other situations. Um, hence, them trying to cover these things all up. But uh, Officer Lee fabricating Kevin. Kevin's a witness to a murder, but way before that, Rody Morales was befriending me at my gym, saying, Kevin, let's go to strip clubs. Uh, while Victoria was Walker's paid off with Brian Longbotham on all these setup attempts and frame jobs with strippers and porn stars. Um, and um, Rody Morales was the fourth. Uh, Eric Christensen, U Southern Oregon State College. Val Morozo, University of Colorado. Tom Farley, Rory Morales, back here in California. Let's go to strip clubs. 
Uh, all of them are like, let's make money, start webs, web host com- or web building companies and make money and hang out at strip clubs. And well, hanging out at strip clubs is illegal. What they were doing is these frame job operations with Victoria Walker and many others trying to make it look like I'm stalking strippers and porn stars and doing all these horrible things, none of which exist like everything else. But more importantly, when Rody Morales was befriending me, I have daily news clippings that Rody Morales was while working at our gym, uh, trying to catch a murderer. Of course, after this and after I found out what was going on at 29, the police are running around saying, I've killed someone. Sounds strange. And then it's some of violent paranoid schizo, right? While they keep changing and switching to rile the masses against me, there is nothing I've done but let Rody Morales in my life. And at one point he tried with the LAP to plant trash ba- a trash bag of marijuana in my house which didn't work so they could try to set me up as a drug dealer and frame me and things like this, right? Um, now, it's hard to really understand where things are coming from because it's coming from each and every person all working together, connected across the entire Internet, and if I'm rattling off four people from state to state, right, how does that happen? I just farted wrong in high school class and um, the kingpin mobster of the world... Um, Pablo Escobar's hunting me down for my entire life, which I'm supposed to think that Lorena Escobar is somehow related to Pablo Escobar, my father hired to hunt me down and follow me from college to college. No, she's not related to the Pablo Escobar family. Her last name is just Escobar, but she is, is, however, being paid off to hunt and stalk me by my father and probably try to make me look crazy. Because if I say the Escobar, they're going to go, oh, Kevin's being hunted by, thinks he's being hunted by Paulo Escobar or something like this, right? So I can't tell you, but remember, my father has a secondary psychology degree, and he uses it to hunt down, hurt, harm, maim, torture, kill people he doesn't like, right? Um, so why does this so-called, I'm such a good orthopedic surgeon, have a secondary psychology degree, and the more I kind of get away and distance myself from him or anyone involved, they keep coming after me with more and more larger and larger groups, right? And these groups include the LAPD, firemen or whatever, and I have nothing against the LAPD or firemen other than the corrupt trash hunting me down trying to have me killed, Um, but the LAPD firemen do serve a purpose, but if they're not serving the purpose, then they have no place, they don't belong, those people don't belong in those organizations because those organizations are to protect me. My taxpayer dollars pay them to protect me from criminals or fires or whatever. And so the entire point is that they will say and do whatever it takes to cover up this mass operation. Hence why at this point after paying off or contacting this guy to go after me and try to thug me quiet, they're now writing new falsified police reports. And by the way, they have been reported to Internal Affairs and FBI over and over. So if anyone has something to hide, it's them. Okay, so... Okay, so while this is several months later, you're now once again going to see the Met the Warner Center met security following around harassing me on public streets. Um, and the reason this is so important is this isn't one event. They did this before calling the police to have the police come out. And the police are like, well, you're parked in the red. And I'm like, I'm not parked. I'm waiting with my engine running for a parking spot. And then the cops, then one of the crooked female cops says, move forward. And I move forward where a fire hydrant is. And then the her buddy comes and he says, you know, you're supposed to leave and this and that. Why did you move forward? Now I'm going to give you a warning ticket and be an asshole and mean. And I said, well, she told me to move forward. And she said, no, I didn't. Right? Trying to cover up their crimes. or trying to make it look like I'm a public nuisance. But most importantly, everyone waits here. People wait here all day. They wait for people to come out, to go in the car with their car running. They park their cars there. They park their cars with hazards. They park their cars there with hazards. Uh, off, whatever. It's just a part on a public street by a complex, but the Met security is following me, not only outside coming out of their cage, out of the complex in anger and rage at me, 
they're having security companies follow me to every public location as well in the world, taking turns, trying to make me look crazy, trying to make me look like a public nuisance, contacted by the police, contacting uh, the security companies to hunt me down and have me killed or eradicated for what I know um, at this point because they couldn't kill me or eradicate me in a clean way with no loose ends. Now it's gotten really messy because I have websites and I'm telling people what's going on and those involved in my eradication are angry about it and those people are probably in like four billion now because they believe the lies they're told. Um, so this is a second event. Now you're gonna see the security guy come out, the Met guy, the Met security come out of the Warner Center complex harassing and provoking me and telling me I can't wait on a public street for my friend to come out of the house. Okay, well truth be told, I wasn't waiting for a friend. I was actually waiting for a parking spot. But it's irrelevant because I have the right to wait on a public street with my car on, with the engine running, whatever, without security guys coming from private property onto the public government streets saying you can't do this, you can't do this, and now we're going to follow you to coffee shops and you're not allowed to drink coffee and you're not allowed to drink Jamba juices and um, you're also not allowed to go bowling or eat at restaurants either. This isn't a boundary thing, this is a mass stalking murder thing with security companies paid off and you can see the correlated events from the beginning where they're watching me on camera to come out with the mass met groups who are all told to be vigilantes by um, people like Sean Dinsey and this going on for 40 years um, basically thinking that he can hunt down and kill whoever he wants or eradicate them because he doesn't like their kind or them or whatever some kind of 40 to 40 year personal vendetta now my father did tell me a story about an officer Romo that my father yelled at or something when I was a little kid that my father said if he ever Supposedly, he pulled my father over on an ER call. My father going, the cop pulled him over saying you made a turn too close, too right, a right turn too close to the curb or something. Um, and my father said if any of you guys ever come into um, the police station in the ER room, I won't help you. Um, but I found out my father's a pathological liar, and I heard that story maybe in my mid-20s. I don't know if it's true with all of his other lies. I can't tell you if this is, if my father's just, I think what my father's trying to do is make me look like I have a personal vendetta against the police, but the truth is the police with my family have a personal vendetta against me and they're trying to make me look crazy and obsessed and like a psychotic nut job. Some of their lies verbally are recorded or I'm a violent paranoid schizo in 5150 trying to lock me away forever but no matter how many times I prove on video that I'm the opposite of what they say they with these mass groups get angrier and angrier. So you're going to see now on video the mass security coming out once again harassing me in anger and rage following me around outside in public you're not allowed to take walks you're not allowed to get exercise you're not allowed to talk to people they have met people following me around provoking me um, hundreds to thousands per day if I go to the park thousands come out per hour um, we're gonna hunt you and try to eradicate you by trying to get you to go after us in their passive-aggressive set of operations which start at five years old with my own brother told to do things to me with teachers in high school told to do things to me with students told to do things with me with people told to befriend me make me look like a crazy asshole all sorts of things that don't make any sense um, um, and so um, all these events from stranger to stranger from state to state are all connected and smear defamation slander and people said Kevin's a horror mo horrible monster go after him and do these things to him and you have seen it right here just a small excerpt now remember I have about 15 terabytes of daily operations just like what you're gonna see here uh, from subtle mental illness attacks to physical attacks all day and night 24 7 20 years of dislocation and then going on from every place I've ever been and then them trying to turn around Kevin's a public nuisance, Kevin's an asshole, but the only argument they can come up with is, oh, Kevin took a walk 
after 10 p.m., and that's unacceptable. Kevin rested his feet on a chair and read a book, and putting your foot on a chair is ruining everyone's lives. Things that don't make any sense. Um, so really, what is it? Starts at 5, Kevin's kind can't exist, psychology, community, government come in, flagging operations, flagging kill or eradication operations to rid me of the world, no matter what it takes, for being the nicest, friendliest, accepting person known to man, and maybe on a very rare occasion being grouchy or, or being an asshole or something like and 99.9% .9 of the time being a really good person but that doesn't matter right the world doesn't need to know that you get the idea these are strategic government kill operations and if they can't kill you they're gonna lock you away in a jail cell or rental institution my family saying, you have to make a choice. Do you want to live in a jail cell or a mental institution the rest of your life? Um, for no reason at all, we just don't like you. Uh, doing it in such a way that they can get away with it. And that's it. So um, I hope you saw this and I hope whatever happens to me or whatever is not because I've done anything wrong. Because these people who are paid off working with my family and government, mass corporations like Starbucks, Coffee Bean, uh, restaurants worldwide, all roped in and reeled in to have me hunted, killed, or eradicated for absolutely no reason at all. Um, you get the idea. Um, you're seeing it here just a small, tiny bit, but you're seeing the linking the police working with security companies, private citizens, in this case more aggressive with the physical attacks because I have the proof on video and then they're making up lies. It's a crime to have proof of people killing you or ridding you of the world, which is the crime of all crimes. And then what I have on video, there has never been a crime against one man on this scale in history of humanity. Um, showing that they don't want any truth coming out and these are mass cover-up operations. Okay, security's coming behind me. From the mat. I'm kind of waiting here as if I was picking someone up. Hi. Are you waiting for somebody? Yeah. Yeah, you're not allowed to wait over here because of the fire uh, line. Oh, well, you know, if the cops come out, the firemen come out, I'll move, so it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah are you you're waiting for somebody for the front? Yeah, my friend's coming out. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you want to get in with a pass, you can go to the front. Yeah, no, I'm waiting for my friend to come out. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not a problem, is it? You can, you can go over there and get a pass. Okay, security's coming behind me from the map. I'm kind of waiting here as if I was picking someone up. Hi. Are you waiting for somebody? Yeah. Yeah, you're not allowed to wait over here because of the fire uh, line. Oh, well, you know, if the cops come out, the firemen come out, I'll move, so it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you're waiting for somebody for the problem? Yeah, my friend's coming out. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. If you want to get in with a pass, you can go to the, the front. Yeah, no, I'm waiting for my friend to come out. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's not a problem, is it? Oh, you, you can go over there and get a pass. You can get in. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, but they're coming out in a few minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But you're out here in That's public. You you're out here in public, so you know that. That? You've come out in here in public, so you know that. Yeah, well. Yeah, we're in public. Also, you know, it's access over there. Uh huh. The cars with the building. Uh huh. So that's why people cannot parking over here as well. Oh. You yeah, well, I'm not parked. I'm on a public street, government property, waiting for my friends. So. What I try, try to explain to you is, is traffic. You know, people coming in over here. So, so let me ask you a question. Are you a police officer? What's that? Are you a police officer? I don't need to be. Do a you police. work for the government for the it's streets? Common sense, sir. Do. I'm waiting for my friend. Get lost. Don't harass me, okay? I'm not harassing you. I just you've come the off private property on a public property to oh, start shit. You want me to call the police? I can call the police. So you, I can give you the number. I can give you the number. You can. Okay, give me the number. Yeah. Which station you want? 
Yeah. I don't. I already have them all, so it doesn't matter. Where's? I don't know what your problem is. I'm waiting for my friend. No, but I just asked you. You want me to take a? You want me to take a? I don't care what you do. You can. You can do whatever. I'm sitting out here on public property, and you've come out harassing me. I'm not harassing you. I'm just warning you that is. Okay, that's fine. I got the message. Okay, I got the message. Okay, let me take a picture. Okay, let me take your picture. Actually, your entire conversation is videoed. Okay. Yeah. I don't care. Okay, good. I, I don't do nothing else that I just warning you. So why? Let me ask you. Again, why did you come out from your cage to private to uh, public it's property to harass cage. people, sir? You need to treat people as, as I treat you. Yeah, exactly. You You've come out respect. here harassing me while I'm you waiting for someone. You're using the word harassing because that's the only word that you can use. This is not your job. Do you understand? My job is to make sure that the, the owners getting access freely and no. Let me ask you a question. Am I on your property? No. I just tell you that is. I, I understand. I got your. I got your. Okay. Look. Line. Look. You're. You're red doing. Line look. Red line over there. It's an entrance. Entrance. You're not a fireman. What's that? You're not a fireman. It matter. It's a common sensor. People wait here all day, and I watch them wait here all day, and they wait there. Let me ask you a question. If I can provide you 10 terabytes of video of people waiting here all day and night for 18 years, well, you what are you going to tell me? Police and they, they're going to take care of that. All they can do is say you can't wait here. Exactly. Okay. It's common sense. Correct. So if I'm not breaking the law... You and me is something that you know. So no, dude, dude, let me ask, let me tell you, get help, no, go to a psychologist, get help, deal with your control issues. I'm going gonna, gonna to laugh you over there. Okay, I'm laughing too. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to report to the, the commander. Who's the commander? Valley. Oh, here? Yeah, who's Valley? Okay, and what's he going to say? I'm waiting for a friend? No. And I'm not allowed to wait for people? I have to park? It's a fire line. Okay. Are you a fireman? Okay, now we're laughing. We're laughing that people are going to watch this video and laugh at their, your ass off for you coming out of here being a complete fucking idiot. Just explain to Okay, good. Now go. Go. Go away. Go away. You insult me? You using You came here harassing me. Go away. Okay, record it yourself. What are you saying? Go away. You're following me. You came out of your cage to harass me. Now go away. You're not going to force me. Call me to the police. For what? That's the thing exactly because that's what you're thinking. You you came out here yelling at me. I, no, I didn't yell at you, sir. I talking to you. But you won't leave me alone. You gave me a little that's message, you, now you can go away. I say, get out of here. That's the yell. What's that? If I say, please, sir, you can no parking over here. I give you the I'm not parked. To go to the front, Look, listen. Parking in the visitor area. Everyone, so, so people who are watching this, uh, listen to the engine revving. The car is not parked. This piece of shit's following me around. He's working with Dinsey, harassing me. Uh, he's trying to cover up the mass crime spree he's involved in. That's my job, sir. Your job is not to follow people. Your job is not to follow people in the public places harassing them. So you're saying, Kevin, you know, maybe you were a little hard on this guy, right? Maybe the guy was dropped on his head as a child, and he doesn't think straight, and he thinks he's Gomer Pyle, uh, gung-ho Gomer Pyle, I don't know, uh, and he's like Roger Ramjet out there um, doing what it takes to uphold the peace and freedom of the red zones. Um, if that were the case, if this was a one-time thing, I would be like, yeah, so be it. You know, give the guy a break. Who cares? The guy's got enough problems. But that's not what's going on. What's going on is this happens from person to person, security guard to security guard, one sequentially after the next, not only this location, in every location in the world, uh, all interlinked with things like them getting together with my brother when he was 16 and my brother and friends going out with a big... Uh, high beam light thingy flashing them and trying to get them to chase them and things like that and then of course saying it's Kevin like the other hundreds of thousands of things like that to the world um, no these are strategic operations to remove me from society um, and like I said before nobody cares if someone pulls up to a red curve waiting for someone or looking for a parking spot or whatever Okay, so just to prove an absurd point while editing this, 
Uh, I wanted to simply run outside with a camera, go down to the other side of my complex to the end of Owen's mouth, um, and video some cars that pull up all day and night uh, waiting in the same location, and nobody cares. The Met people don't care, the Willow Oaks people don't care, the people in Washington, D.C., with I had to go down with police abuse dot com all across the US they don't care about them whether they're walking in front of the White House in the tourist section like they care that I did for some strange reason with White House security following me all over the place uh, trying to thug and intimidate me quiet if someone can answer that question I'd love to know what the hell is their problem starting at five years old um, making a stupid absurd point that we all know that if the Met security and people couldn't care less that people are doing the same exact thing as me, um, then it's not about my behavior. It's about um, an agenda and people targeting me and making up every lie and excuse no demand to get what they want. Here is some video of everyone else doing what he's telling me I can't do, showing that I'm not doing anything wrong, that it's personal, it's strategic, they're in an angry rage about something, my kind can't exist, it starts at five years old, there's worldwide support doing this to me all day and night, 24-7, with billions of people, and that is what this video along with now 15 terabytes of video proves and shows that someone at a very young age with a psychology degree wants me dead and gone um, and the police government uh, NSA FBI and worldwide support are now all working and conspiring together to uh, eradicate my kind as they put it whatever they mean by that okay so the spot I was waiting in uh, you see this red spot here, which is in between. There is a in and out area here, and then there's an in and out area here. And this red part, I wasn't parked, I was just waiting in my car as if I was picking up someone, or actually, a lot of times I kind of pull there and um, I come out and maybe find, you know, a spot around here around this area or something you know depending on the day or whatever but the point is that the security guard is claiming that I've somehow blocked the entrance and I'm stopping traffic and they did this um, they did this a couple years ago and it called the police and had the police come out um, with excuses that I've been here for hours and I'm blocking the entrance right um, and that's all on video, um, which I'm not going to attach to this video because um, it's just going to be too long, but you can always pull it up. Okay, so no cars are being blocked. People wait here all the time. Um, here actually comes a security guard. Uh, we're not going to get into things. We're just going to wait for someone to wait there. And then we are going to document how people come here and they wait here. Um, and so um, that's it, right? And we're going to show that people come out and they wait here and that, um, that um, it's not a normal or uncommon or different or weird or anything like that. They're just nitpicking what Kevin Perlman does to try to provoke me into reactions to use against me with the police. Now the other thing you might want to think about is the guy's wording, I'm gonna give Kevin the number for the police because he wants me to call police. Well that doesn't even make any sense, right? Okay, so we have a lady. She's come out she's waiting for someone to pick her up. Um, and, um, so someone's going to come into this red zone and they're going to pick her up. Usually they wait, you know, usually the people aren't out first, but 
she come out, car pick her up, then that guy who said, you can't park here, you have to go in, get a pass, or this and that, um, right, doesn't make sense. Okay, here we go. This guy, okay, this guy pulls out, he's picking her up in the spot I'm not allowed to park in. I have to go get a pass, according to the guy. Um, to do exactly what this guy is doing, right? He's parked here, uh, girls waiting, girls coming out to get picked up. I don't see a security guard coming out going, you can't wait here. You need to go get a pass to go onto the property. I don't see any of that. Um, now I'm just gonna plop the camera down here to show, to see how long, um, how long they wait. And hopefully they're gonna wait for a long time. Um, this is about the time period that I was waiting before the security guard came out. Now, you're probably sitting here on camera watching my video going, Kevin, this is absurd. Why are you even videoing this? Um, because people come out and nobody cares that someone pulls up to a red curb. Um, Nobody pulls, cares that uh, you go up to a red curb and wait to pick someone up be, and you've committed a crime because the curb's red with security falling around saying, I'm going to call the cops and you better do this and then, um, and while you're out in public, and then we're also going to follow you to coffee shops with people from the Met, this is the Met, uh, saying you're not, you sipped, you sipped one millisecond too long on your coffee, coffee right? Things like this. Okay, so we have people, the, there's some of the neighbors from my complex are coming out of their complex. They always harass me when I sit on steps by their house, which is my property. It's joined property, right? It's, it's a HOA, um, a townhouse complex. Um, the guy in the green shirt, black pants and yellow shirt. Um, now, I don't know what the hell he's doing, but um, it's not the type of thing anyone cares about, right? Um, and I don't see security coming out, going, you know, you committing a crime, and I'm going to call the cops, and I have all the cops' numbers, and this and that. I don't see any of this happening, right? As a matter of fact, they couldn't care less, unless it's Kevin Perlman. Um, so if that isn't personal, I don't know what is. And if it isn't strategic, I don't know what is. Because it happens every single day of my life with mass worldwide groups, nitpicking things that nobody could care less about, and having worldwide campaigns take turns on me in an angry rage, uh, going, you blinked wrong, you farted wrong, you waited by a red curve. Now, if I was like the security guard, um, I would be uh, timing it or you know calculating the amount of minutes um, now also just to show you this guy smoking the thing okay so now they're leaving I don't know where they're going um, and I don't know what they're doing but um, oh it's a girl um, okay so there you have it right nobody cares so what's the security guard trying to do um, I, I'm not holding this. Okay, so also there's a guy that came out smoking a cigarette in the black and pink pattern. Um, okay, so, so, um, um, I don't see the security guard coming out angry, enraged, this or that. Um, now that girl kind of like drove up like, I know you're sitting in your car or something, but who cares? Um, but I don't see him going to this guy back there. Why isn't she going to the guy with the lights on, right? Okay, so anyways, 
um, just to show you that what everyone on the planet is doing that is okay is not okay for Kevin Perlman and worldwide groups get together hunting me down um, taking turns in an angry rage you know you're causing problems and you're doing these things um, and it's your behavior and you're riling up the mass the masses are coming after you because you're it's your behavior and you're making them do it especially the police government security companies and psychology community with it's your behavior and yet you just saw someone pull up do a little loop-de-loop -loop, um, talk to their friends was there longer than I was and security isn't instantly coming out you can't do that um, or I'll call the cops and then the cops come out and they make up lies to help the security company lock you away and eradicate you and this isn't a one-time thing it's all day and night 24 7 20 years in this location in every location in the world while my life's being collected and data mined to use against me by the government and the NSA. Uh, you farted wrong, you blinked wrong, you parked in the same spot five times in four months, you name it, right? Thing after thing. So, um, do we have a second criminal like me? Uh, no, I guess, oh yeah, yeah, he's, he's parking here now by the fire hydrant. Um, so why isn't security coming out? Okay. Why isn't security coming out and saying, um, I'm gonna call the cops because you're parked by the fire hydrant here, right? Uh, why isn't he coming out? I mean, I know that my sarcasm is kind of like, oh, Okay, you're gonna get a crooked shot, sorry. I know my sarcasm um, is like, Kevin, you know, this is absurd. Why are you even taking the time? Well, I'm t obviously I'm taking the time because if everyone on the planet does what he's doing right now or the other guy does, but I have security, NSA, FBI, mass groups following me around saying I'm a crazy man, it's my behavior, and I think differently, um, then I'm gonna get some video showing I'm doing the same thing as everyone else, um, and nobody cares, okay? So now, okay, this is good. So now, I think I have to zoom out. Okay, so now we have two cars. Two cars, two. I mean, this is crazy, right? I mean, right? The cops actually came out a couple years ago. It was a different security guard. So what does that tell you? If it's a completely different security guard, a completely different one. Two years ago, they called the Topanga Division LAPD saying Kevin's waiting by the entrance, blocking the entrance, okay? Are these people blocking the entrance? No. Was I blocking the entrance? No. Um, did the cops come out? Yes. Did the cops make a moral decision to her thug, harass, try to set me up, frame me? Yes. Um, okay, now he's picking up, I think, a pink and black, too. Um, wait. Oh, yeah, she's getting in the back. Okay, so... So, um... Right? Nobody cares. Nobody cares that they're doing that, but the, but the security cares if Kevin's doing that. Right? That was my entire point. Uh, that also applies to taking walks. If I take a walk and anywhere, if I take a walk around here, they come out harassing me with hundreds of people per hour to thousands of people per hour. And if I drive in my car down to Vegas or Wisconsin, uh, Utah, doesn't matter. You're ruining all of our lives by taking walks. Okay, so there you have it. Proof on video, me doing the same thing as everyone else, nothing different, but I'm being hunted for it. With excuses that it's my behavior, 
I'm a public nuisance. I'm a monster. I'm creating chaos and destruction. Uh, Lead Officer Sean Dinsey with many others at Topanga Division. Um, and this has gone on my entire life since five years old from place to place, growing up, doing absolutely nothing wrong, but dealing with psychotic murderers um, that want me dead and gone. And there you have it on video. Um, and I just wanted to, I'm in the process of editing and I just wanted you to see that I'm doing nothing different than anyone else. Okay, so in conclusion, what you're kind of seeing is this progression of we're following you, trying to make you paranoid, trying to make you look like a schizo, um, with psychological labels that I'm crazy and all sorts of weird freaky things that don't make any sense by the masses worldwide. Uh, why is this happening? I can't tell you, but it starts at five years old from a family with uh, all of them doctors with secondary psychology degrees, um, except my mother, she's an art therapist, right? So a family based on nitpicking and analyzing and trying to fix people to death or whatever. Now, what is their reasoning? Well, to me, it's almost to create this perfect robotic human being that doesn't exist in the imagination of my family or something like that, yet they're complete hypocrites and do the opposite of what they preach. Um, while maybe in their minds and the people helping them at a younger childhood, maybe they're thinking, uh, Kevin has a problem, uh, we need to get to the bottom of it, we just want to help Kevin, who knows, I can't tell you, but all I can tell you is now, um, this forest fire of theirs, by analyzing, nitpicking, trying to get anything to use against me, uh, telling me that I can't see myself, and I have a problem, and I have to confess to things that aren't true, and change to be the opposite of who I am, and if I, if I become the opposite of who I am, a really good person, then I don't see how that helps me or anyone else. I mean, Kevin, you're a really good person, so you got to change, and you got to go around and be like your brother, and grab a crowbar, and start bashing people's skulls, and then you're a good guy, and we won't walk you in jail, and mental institutions, and this or that, and at the same time, they're trying to nitpick, uh, you can only have one beer per month, you can only kiss one girl per year, you have to date the girl we give you, and you're not allowed to date woman after woman until you find the one that meshes and is right for you. Things that don't make any sense, because hey, if you date more than one woman, then um, you're crazy and people won't do that. All the disinformation that doesn't make any sense, right? So are we dealing with a family that's paying off the police to try to fix me into a perfect life? Or, or are the police with my family saying, this is the life we want for you or else? Um, and being that I got into building adult websites, studio photography with women, we're coming from a family like orthopedic surgeons, kind of like the Paris Hilton thing, except Paris Hilton's family isn't hunting them over it, they're just angry over it. Um, we don't want this to happen and we're gonna make sure it doesn't happen and we're gonna make our child look crazy using our psychology degrees. Seems like a more rational um, explanation. Now, what doesn't make sense is why all these people care. Example, if I walk up to people in my neighbors going, you see that guy over there, they're crazy, everyone go after him, we gotta put him in mental institutions. Everyone's gonna look at me like, Kevin, you're crazy, right? But ironically, that's what they're doing. They're sort of approaching person after person going, Kevin's crazy, uh, he's a violent paranoid schizo, he has nervous issues, he has anxiety issues, he has bipolar issues, he has um, I don't know, I could rattle off a hundred different changing things that change on a daily basis. Uh, point is that people don't keep changing labels like that every day unless they have an agenda and it's about hate. Um, so the point is, well, this is an unexplainable situation because normally people don't take parts, part in things like this and they say it's unacceptable. 
they're all coming after me and they're all somehow being wound up against me like Adolf Hitler did to his regime and while it's extremely unexplainable what's happening even with authority figures and the police, government, psychology community all saying Kevin needs to be hunted, killed, died, and eradicated based on the dis disinformation and propaganda given to them with billions of government dollars to the world in secret behind my back to try to make me look crazy, to try to flip me out with the people walking up, I know you, but I don't know you. I don't know you, but I'm going to use these cryptic terror tactics based on mimicking your conversations or uh, gestures or whatever, hinting I know you, um, or having women follow me from place to place saying Kevin won't leave me alone and he's stalking me, all sorts of things like that. Um, and what you're seeing here is the cover-up operations after 29, you better not talk or we'll kill you, and sometimes more subtle threats like it is what it is, or you better learn to accept accept what's going on or things are going to get a lot worse for you or no relaxing for you nigger relating back to me kissing the black girl at between first and second grade at Sunny Skies Day Camp which nobody could care less about and if we're talking about um, people dating or getting married interracial inter, uh, dating sex marriages what is that in the US like 60-70%. So when I'm being thugged, uh, you better meet a Jewish girl and become a devout Jew, and everyone's supporting that, they're all hypocrites, doesn't really make sense. It means that they have a, a different agenda, and the agenda is locking me away in jail cells and mental institutions, and now you have to under try to figure out what it is that they're trying to cover up, like um, the incidences where my brother went after Gregoire with a crowbar uh, and me saying to my brother, well, even though you're telling me or stopping my brother by jumping the way and me telling my brother um, or my brother telling me blood is thicker than water in a mobster way and then telling me telling him, you know, bullshit, not in that context and then uh, him telling me that he and his friends put a teacher in a mental institution and then they're going to put me in a mental institution then telling me the freaky things like they have bugs in my room and they're listening to everything I do on the radio um, showing the connected events and I'm just rattling off one of these situations but let's stick to that one uh, the connected events of you don't talk now once again why do all these people care why are all these people on the side of the thugging murderer? That doesn't make sense. They're not on my side. Kevin went off his own direction and he's trying to live his life. Um, instead, they're following me, mass strangers I don't know, going, Kevin, you don't talk or we kill you. They have no relation or association or even friends with my brother or family is very strange, showing an actual government agenda since five years old. Uh, and to try to flip me out and make me look crazy and spin my mind or raise my mind and give me nervous breakdowns and force me, as Dincy states on the front of his Facebook, uh, which are on tons of my videos, website, how do we force people into mental institutions? Once again, people don't force people into mental institutions. Those are hate crimes. Hey, uh, Kevin, I don't like you. I don't like this shirt, so I'm going to force you into mental institutions. Kevin, you have a college degree. I don't. I don't like you. I'm going to force you into a mental institution. Kevin, you have some really cool business-related innovative ideas. I don't like you. I'm jealous. I'm going to force you into a mental institution. Okay. Well, all I can tell you is this anger towards me and this rage towards me actually starts at five years old, which is even stranger. So now we're talking psychology community and labels. And while I can't make a direct association, I was born on Castle Air Force Base in Merced and my father was in the Air Force as a doctor in the Air Force and I can't really expand on that in any way, shape, and form but you might, that's kind of food for thought when we're talking about government kill flagging operations with people with psychology degrees and things like that and I will leave this uh, at that. <laughs>